In this video, I will show you the continuation to the first part of the character customization series. Hello world, by Devere. Today we will be animating our character with an animation player and syncing the animations to match with our different parts. If you have not seen the first video of this tutorial series, you can watch it by clicking on the card that you are seeing right now. As you may have already noticed, I did some changes to the project but not to the character scene, so you have not missed anything there. I just added a background and some platforms with its respective collisions, as this is supposed to be a 2D platformer game. Let me remind you that you can find the sprites on the description below. Now let's switch over to our character scene. Here we will begin by adding an animation player. I'm going to create two animations because those ones are the ones that we created on a sprite. So if you have a different amount, you should create that many animations. We have idling and walking animations created. The next step is to keyframe the frame property of the body sprite on each animation, just the body for now. There are two ways of doing the following step. One is animating all the other properties manually with the animation player, like with it with the body. Right now, you're seeing how it is done. The second way is animating the remaining parts by code. I recommend you to go for the first one if you have few frames and animations. If you have a lot of them, you could sync them by code, but keep in mind that I think that this approach could give you worse performance if you not optimize things well. For the second approach, we need to make sure that we only have animated the body part. Let's add a new script and connect the body sprite nodes on frame change signal to it. Make an unready bar that corresponds to each part. Create a function called sync frames that has a frame as a parameter and set all the parts frame property to the parameters. Call this function from the body frame change method. Add the collision shape to the character. I used the capsule shape 2D to avoid collisions getting stuck on edges and position it to the bottom. We have the frame synced, but I will write some more code to make our character move and jump based on a Godot documentation small code snippet. To do this, I will add some more actions to the input map. Write constants for the movement values, like the gravity, the maximum speed, the velocity, and jump force. Overwrite the physics process method and add the movement code that you are seeing right now, or implement your your own. Mine is really simple and it is not that realistic because it was just for testing. It checks the key that you are pressing and moves the character to that direction with the speed of the max speed. If nothing is being pressed, it makes the movement to zero. To avoid weird behavior when facing to the other side, not only sync the frame property but also the horizontal flip or flip H1. This makes every part to face to the side that the body is facing to. Finally, to finish with this code, make a variable that stores a reference to the animation player and call the play method. Pass the corresponding animation's name as a parameter. In my example, I play the walking animation whenever it is moving to either side and the idling animation when it is not moving. I also wrote some code to allow the player to jump, but again, that was just for testing. This is the final result. All the frames flip and sync perfectly. I made a second variation for the clothing and hair. To show you how easy it is to reuse some stuff, add a new one and create something different based on the mix of them. If this video receives a good amount of support like the last one, I will make a third part with random character generation to make NPCs that look different by code. This was all for today, thank you for watching and goodbye world, see you in the next one.